What's up? This is Mario, and welcome to Awesome Audio. In this video, we will be talking about the decibel. It is common to hear that the decibel is a measurement unit for sound. However, this statement is actually incorrect. The decibel is a measurement unit not only used for sound, but also for voltage, power, and a few other cases, which mainly has two functions. To express not a magnitude, but the relationship between the performed measurement and a previously established reference, and to reduce a very broad numerical scale to a smaller one using a logarithm. A logarithm is a function with two numbers, a and b, which as a result will give us the exponent necessary so that b, to the power of that exponent, will give us a as a result. Number b is called the base of the logarithm. For example, this logarithm would be read as the base 2 logarithm of 8, and the result is 3, since 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. When the logarithm doesn't show an explicit base, it is normally assumed to be a base 10 logarithm. However, in software such as MATLAB, the baseless logarithm by default is base e, known as the natural logarithm. So in that case, it is necessary to specify we want to use the base 10 logarithm. When we have amplitudes, the value in decibels is calculated with this formula. But when we have powers, the formula is a bit different. In this video, we will mainly use the formula for amplitudes. There are different types of decibels, which are relative to a different reference. This reference is very important, as the meaning of the decibels depends on it. The general rule is that zero decibels means that the measurement is the same as the reference. Positive decibels mean that the measurement is larger than the reference, and negative decibels mean that the measurement is smaller than the reference. For example, sound pressure level decibels, or decibels SPL, are the ones used specifically to measure sound level. In the formula, we see that they are referenced to 20 micropascals, the minimum audible pressure. Considering that 0 decibels means equal to the reference, then 0 decibels SPL equals 20 micropascals, and negative decibels correspond to pressures too low for the ear to perceive. We can hear from 0 decibels to 140 decibels approximately, where we start suffering hearing damage at 90 decibels, and the threshold of pain is at 130 decibels. If we convert these sound levels to pascals by solving the decibel formula, we obtain these results. As you can see, you can clearly see how decibels reduce the broad range between 20 micropascals and 200 pascals. Plus, they convert the exponential increment of pressure to a linear increment. An important consideration is that sound attenuates with distance, so it is always necessary to specify the distance at which a sound source was measured. Just like in the case of frequencies, as we explained in episode 4, sound intensities are also perceived in logarithmic form, that is, the decibel scale is more related to how our ear perceives sound intensity, opposed to the linear Pascal scale which is more related to how sound happens in the real world. A doubling of amplitude is not perceived as a doubling of volume. Instead, according to psychoacoustics, our ear perceives a doubling of volume with each increment of 10 decibels SPL, that is, a pressure 3.16 times higher. Here, we again see the graph of the ear's response which we showed in episode 10, except now we can interpret it better. Now we can see that, actually, the decibels used in this specific graph are not decibels SPL, but rather, they are relative to the magnitude measured at 1 kHz regardless of what that magnitude was. Decibels volt are similar to decibels SPL, only that they're referenced to 1 volt. Therefore, 0 decibels volt equals 1 volt. Positive decibels are greater than 1 volt, and negative decibels are under 1 volt. Actually, the latter specifically would be between 0 volts and 1 volt, since due to the use of logarithms, it is not possible to convert negative numbers to decibels. For example, 0 0.2 volts equals negative 14 decibels volt. Now, we will talk about decibels full scale. Since digital systems represent the points of a wave through binary numbers, there is only a certain range on which they are able to produce a wave, which would go from a binary number formed with all zeros to a binary number formed with all ones. This is simply the general idea, as there are different ways to represent negative numbers in binary, in which I'm not going to elaborate. To simplify, regardless of the number of bits, this range is usually represented in a range from negative 1 being the minimum to 1 being the maximum, so all points have decimal values between negative 1 and 1. 0 would be found at the central line. For example, a point could have a value of 0 0.5, 0 0.33, negative 0 0.72, etc. Let's recall that amplitude is the absolute distance between the central line and any of the two ends, whether it is the positive or the negative one, so negative amplitudes don't exist. 
Decibels full scale are referenced to the maximum amplitude, which is 1. Since all points' absolute values are lower than 1, their decibels will be negative, due to them being lower than the reference, and the maximum level is 0 decibels. As you can see, this case is the opposite of decibels SPL, where positive decibels are mainly used and 0 decibels was the lower limit. In audio, music, and video software, we usually see decibels in negative values, since it is decibels full scale that are being used. A disadvantage is that the only way to represent an amplitude of zero is with negative infinity decibels. Finally, decibels are also useful in amplification. Amplifying a wave means multiplying the value of all of its individual points by a number. For example, to amplify a wave to double the amplitude, we multiply all of its points by two. An attenuation is simply amplifying, or multiplying, by a positive number smaller than one, for example, 0.5. The usefulness in logarithms in amplification is that the laws of logarithms show that a multiplication within the logarithm equals a sum of logarithms. This means that the decibels, since they are in a logarithmic scale, convert multiplications to sums, so a series of amplifications, which are originally multiplications, can be expressed as sums or subtractions of decibels. In amplification, decibels are referenced to the current amplitude, so amplifying by zero decibels causes no change in the wave, Adding decibels amplifies the wave, and subtracting decibels attenuates the wave. In this case, it is actually easier to introduce the multiplication factor directly into the logarithm without the need to use the current amplitude as a reference. This use of decibels is common in software and mixers. Actually, the types of decibels that will be used for the amplification will depend on the device you are using. If you are amplifying in software, decibels full scale would actually be added. And if you are amplifying on a mixer, then decibels bolt would be added since you are actually amplifying electric signals. Here I show a table where we see common conversions between a linear scale and decibels. For example, if we have a wave with an amplitude of 0.5 and we add 6 decibels, we amplify its amplitude twofold, so its new amplitude is 1. In the same way, if we subtract 6 decibels, we reduce its amplitude by half returning it to an amplitude of 0.5. And subtracting an additional 6 decibels again halves its amplitude, this time leaving it with an amplitude of 0.25. This is why each consecutive attenuation seems to have less effect on the wave even though we are always subtracting the same amount of decibels. With that, we conclude this episode. In the next one, we will talk about acoustic quality tests. If you enjoyed this episode, you may hit like, leave a comment, or share to those interested. For more content like this, you may also subscribe. See you in the next video.